Yes, this is the Earl Spin Jr. You're watching True School Sports. All right. It's personal between me and you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something that the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I didn't plan on doing this video today because I was just trying to take my Sunday off, but uh, you know, I've had a great day today. I went to the Marlins game, and now I'm just taking this long walk to somewhere... You know, I've, I've been to a couple of times in South Florida, but some of that I, I need to start coming to more because it's some of that I that I have aspirations to live in one day. And one day I will live in. I, I, one day I'm going to live in one of these houses and, and I'm going to have like a, a podcast set up right there. If you guys don't know where I'm at, I'm in the Venetian Islands, you know, where the sun is shining and the, the, the water is beautiful. You know, and the sun, and you know, it's a little hot, but you know, I got my, I got my Marlins jersey wide open. You know, it's a great town to be alive. You know, and, and we're in the aftermath right now of uh, Crawford and Spence. You know, um, great fight, great performance last night from Terrence Crawford. I, I got my prediction dead accurate, as many of you know. So, obviously, there's a lot with Crawford we can speak about, but I actually wanted to, in this video, in this particular video, speak more on the Spence side of things because, you know, Earl Spence, he's a guy that. Um, a lot of people thought I had a chance to beat Terrence Crawford. Now, I didn't. I, I always thought this fight was a not competitive fight. I always thought it was a bit of a mismatch. And I'm glad that it happened so you guys can finally see uh, that I was right. Now, um, the question now becomes two things. Number one, will Earl Spence Jr. ever be the same um, after the Terrence Crawford beatdown? And number two, will Earl Spence Jr., um, will he take the rematch? Okay, so we'll, we'll answer question one. Will Earl Spence Jr. ever be the same? Well, let's call a spade a spade. Earl Spence Jr. is 33 years old. Um, that wasn't no like regular beating he took. He took a, he took a, a sustained ass whooping to his body, to his head, and most importantly to his um his pride. I think I think more so than the body or the head or the, or the heart or anything. The worst thing for a fighter that can be hurt in a, in a, in a loss like that is their pride. And what comes with that is a, is a loss of confidence. So, you know, he's going he's, he's gonna to be really tested right now. Um, you know, um, he's 33 years old. You know, uh, there's not a whole lot, I feel, of boxing left for him, just, just being honest. Because, um, you know, just he, if, you if, you listen to the way the, if you listen to the way Earl Spence has been talking, he hasn't been talking like a fighter that uh, wants to box, you know, three, four, five more years. And, and, and to be told, he's 33 years old. He shouldn't box three or four or five more years. I feel like he's made a lot of money in the sport. You know, go go uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor because he's definitely earned it. He's been a fantastic fighter and a fantastic champion for boxing over the years. Although I didn't agree, agree with how long it took to make the uh, Terrence Carver fight, I'll never I'll never get up here and uh, take away from the accomplishments of Earl Spence Jr. He didn't just become he didn't just just become a three belt champion on accident. Now, um, if he takes three matches Crawford, like what realistically could Earl Spence do? I mean, the reality is. Uh, we know what his style is. We, we know his style is very uh, fundamentally sound, yes, but it's very mechanical. It's 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 it's, it's mechanical style where you know that he's gonna try to close the gap. A lot of what he does well um, in his skill set is 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 reliant upon him getting close to you, closing the gap, and ultimately beating you up. And so my thing is that 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 will always be nullified with Terrence Crawford because of the fact that Terrence Crawford has elite balance superior balance he's a, an amazing uh, sharpshooter meaning that he can counter punch on the move um he's a he's he's an aggressive counter puncher meaning that if earl spence jr gets repetitive with his punches as you saw last night um terrence cover will make him pay and make him pay dearly so you know terrence crawford was asked if the if three match be at 147 or 154 should spence take it he said it doesn't, it doesn't quite matter where he takes it um, and I would, I would agree with Terrence Crawford. I don't think it matters if, if Errol Spence, you know, um, fights in 54 because the size advantage, as you guys saw last night, it, it was never going to be a factor. Terrence Crawford's too physically strong for the, uh, for the normal Errol Spence performance to, 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 to defeat a guy like him. You know, in order for Errol Spence to beat a guy like Crawford, he would have to ultimately find a new way find something new tweak something new and i just don't think that uh 
he's gonna um, be able to do it. Now, I'll tell you guys this. While we're walking through the lovely streets of the Venetian Islands, which right now I'm just, I get inspired every time I walk through the Venetian Islands. It's such a beautiful place. It's the best part of South Florida to me. But um, I think one thing was very telling about Earl Spence at the weigh-in. Um, when Terrence Crawford and him had their face-to-face -face and they had the whole back and forth of, oh, you should have thanked me for this fight and this, that, and the third. Terrence Crawford told Earl Spence, yeah, uh, he was very respectful and there was a lot of mutual respect in the face-off, but he said, you know, let's go out there and make history or whatever. And Earl Spence's response was, and let's make bank. So Earl Spence's mind was always on the money, which, you know, it's prize fighting, but when you're a fighter and you get to a certain stage of fight week and it's the, it's the day before the fight, the last thing I feel at that moment in time you should be worried about is your check clearing. You have a team for these things. You worry about those things after the fight. You do your due diligence and negotiations and, and with people around you to make sure that things are handled um, accordingly. But the fact that that was what he was thinking about while Terrence Crawford is staring at him, getting ready to, you know, try to take his head off, it was very telling about, I think, the psyche of Earl Spence. And, you know, like, let's just call, let's continue calling a spade a spade here on True School Sports. Al Heyman. Or not Al Heyman, but Earl Spence, I should say. Earl Spence, when he was a young, upcoming contender and, and even a champion, you know, you go, you go back and you think about the Earl Spence that fought the guys like uh, Lamont Peterson, the guys like Kel Brook. That guy was a dog. That guy, there, I, I don't think he would have ever beat Crawford, but that version of Spence, there was something about that guy, and I don't think it was the car accident that, that changed Earl Spence. Nope. I don't think the car accident changed Earl Spence. Um, I think it was the um, self-preserving mindset and Al Heyman kind of, you know, softening him up by, telling, by, by him taking the easy road. And you saw how all these things, you know, boxing is a very cool game. You know, you, 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 do, the, you do the wrong things long enough and, and you're going to eventually wind up, all that's going to catch up to you. You're going you're to run into somebody who's bigger, badder, faster, sharper than you, stronger than you and it will all explode in your face on, on fight night. Um, and for Earl Spence, it was a matter of time, you know? So I don't think he'll be the same. You know, um, I, I personally think that if he's gonna continue to box at all, his future shouldn't be at 147 anymore or with Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, he should just take that rematch clause, throw it in the trash can. You know, go try to go to 54. Maybe you can make a Tim Zoo fight happen or something like that. But I, I don't think they'll do that. I think Ter I think Earl Spence ultimately winds up um, probably doing the Terrence Crawford rematch because he'll make a lot. Even if, even if they make like, let's just say, a fraction of whatever they generated for this first fight, it's still more than he'd make fighting Tim Zhu or, you know, Sebastian Fenduro or Brian Mendoza or Brian Castaño or anybody at that 154. So, you know, I think he probably winds up fighting Crawford again and not much changes and, and and truth be told I think I think it's getting to a point where you know you, you got Derek James the coach who's a who's a great coach a renowned coach but and he deserves a lot of credit for how what he's done taking Earl Spence from scratch to where he is now but Derek James should prevent Spence from taking that rematch and and and, and if not Derek James right because maybe he won't but maybe the Nevada Commission should prevent Spence from taking that rematch because um He's or he that was a that was a severe beating last night, and I just I don't think um it's in the best interest of Spence to let him fight Crawford again uh, for boxing fans for his career and even for his health. So um yeah that that's that's my take on the matter. Just wanted to come make some history and, and do my first ever video on the uh, on the Venetian Islands because it's a really beautiful part of South Florida. It really to me is like. The most underrated part of South Florida and you know uh, I, I don't walk through here enough because I don't always have time to get down here but I had some time to get down here today and I'm, I'm feeling inspired I'm feeling motivated and hopefully maybe even you guys out there I know um, this is a boxing video but maybe some of the sites here get you motivated to, 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 to do things bigger in your life because I, when I come to a place like the Venetia Islands and I see how life is you know it makes me want to go that much further in life and we've gone far in true school sports but we're going to continue going farther and who knows maybe maybe one day you know no one day we will have a house like that right there with the with the nice balcony and 
and and we'll have the true school sport podcast by the water it'll be, it'll be something crazy but um got a long way to go to get to the to the house of the Venetia islands that, that's for damn sure but uh anyway i digress you guys are interested in the comments down below do you think earl spence jr will ever be the same and um you know do you think that uh you know him fighting 12 at 154 make any difference so uh, leave your comments down below make sure you guys take the time to subscribe and like i say in every single one of these videos you can love me or you can hate me but i'm just kidding dang it so until next time take your eyes Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, for more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.